Hi everyone, so I'm creating this video for the second time. I think they, there are a lot of important concepts and I really wanted to be very clear and as simple as possible. And hopefully we achieve that goal with this, with this second video. And I'm going to try to, to stick to the basics and the facts. And then if you have any questions, just feel free to comment and, and maybe we can create a third version. Who knows? Uh, so we're, we're not talking about X-ray interactions with matter. We have moved on from X-ray creation. So now we're strictly talking about interactions of photons, so that will make it simpler. Photons interacting with matter, in this case, is going to be our, our patient, which are, we're going to be creating diagnostic images. And we have three factors that really influence the X-ray's interaction with matter, and those are going to be the mass attenuation coefficient, the density, and the thickness. I have specified here that mass attenuation coefficient is really dependent on, on the material and the photon energy. It is not dependent on density. And we, so once we have those factors, then we move on to two different things that are the linear attenuation coefficient and the half value layer. And although they're different, they're really describing the same thing. And I think the best example is just to, to use this relation um, this formula that shows the relation between the half value layer and the LAC or linear attenuation coefficient. And the way I think of it is I, I use the example of lead and we can see a, a nice example of, of lead shielding here. And what we're trying to describe is from the radiation safety perspective, although that's not the only use for, for this formula, but I think it, it, it's a good example. From a radiation perspective, we know that lead is a protective material that we use, and you might wonder why do we use it? Well, the reason we use it is that its half value layer is very small, so it allows us to, to gain protection from radiation by just using a very small amount or of, of this material. That's why we have our are lead when we use in interventional radiology. It, it's relatively thin. If you wanted to achieve the same amount of shielding with a different material, let's say wood, or for example, that will be impossible, right? It will be too, the thickness required will be too much and we wouldn't be able to achieve that. And the, the linear attenuation coefficient in that sense relates to the half value layer. But the linear attenuation coefficient, when we're trying to calculated it's a little bit more complicated and and therefore the half value layer I think comes in uh, handy for a lot of calculations. The half value layer really depends on the atomic number of the material and that makes sense for lead and it also depends on the density of the material and the energy of the x-ray that we're trying to to stop. On the other hand, the linear attenuation coefficient in terms of definition, it is really the product of the mass attenuation coefficient times the, the product of the mass attenuation coefficient times the density. Um, I guess I'm saying that wrong. It, it is really the product of the mass attenuation coefficient and the density, and that will give me my linear attenuation coefficient. So you see all these formulas, the mass attenuation coefficient is related to the linear attenuation coefficient and the linear attenuation coefficient is related to the half value layer. So let's run a, a small example and we have here, if we have a, a material like lead, which is going to have a high linear attenuation coefficient, so think of it as, just look at the name, so we're going to have photons that are going to be highly attenuated when they go through lead that's going to give me a very big denominator here and then on the LAC. And then when we look what effect that has on the half value layer, it gives me a very small half value layer, meaning that for lead, because it has a high linear attenuation coefficient, I can use a thin amount of material to achieve the attenuation of the half value layer. And, and I, I guess if it's not clear, I, I should define that the half value layer is the amount of, of material that is required for me to attenuate 50% of my x-ray beam. Once we, we have talked about the interactions, we have to talk about 
what type of interaction specifically do we generate in, in tissue. And we have coherent scatter, we have photoelectric, we have Compton, we have pair production, and we have photonuclear disintegration. Of all those, really, the ones illustrated here, photoelectric effect and Compton scatter, are going to be the most important one. Coherent scatter is really, you don't have an ionization event, you really have a small excitation of the, of, of the atom, and the orbitals can, can be said to be, if you go to a high energy state, then they come back to a lower energy state, and a photon of the same energy is going to be ejected, but it's going to be ejected in any direction, uh, and, and that's coherent scatter. For photoelectric effect in Compton, the main point is that we're going to be ejecting an electron in both of these. However, for the photoelectric effect, we eject the electron using all of the energy of the photon, so we don't have any remaining photon, and that's very important for imaging purposes. That that's what's going to create our the reason why our bones look uh, look white on on X-ray. On the other hand, when we have a, a Compton, where you see we're ejecting this electron, it's usually of an outer shell. However, we did not require or we, we were not required to use all the energy to eject this electron. So we have some photon energy remaining and it changes direction and it's now lower energy, but it's still it's still there. We we haven't used all the energy like we did in the photoelectric effect. And we're gonna see later on how this plays an important role for imaging and how at different KEVs we have different predominance of the photoelectric or the Compton depending on, on the level of the KEV and we'll talk more about that later in another video.